Welcome to Machines More. If you've seen the initial review, I started with an out-of-the-box vanilla build. Thermals were decent, especially considering that this is a sub-15 liter case, but the vanilla weight I built it up was definitely more of a minimum viable product than anything else, and there was a lot of potential for improvement. After experimenting with this case a little bit, I was able to improve thermals significantly. And you'll also notice that a few things have changed aesthetically also. I'll cover the changes today and I'll share a few ways that I improved the thermals. And since I am using an RTX 3070 Founders Edition card here, a lot of the ideas presented are more pertinent to the flow through style of GPU cooler, but I hope you can find some tips and things to try no matter what GPU you have. First off, the version of the case I have here for testing has both a mesh panel and a tempered glass panel. And there is also a version for $10 more with all mesh panels. If you have the same version I have, there's one important configuration decision you'll need to make, and that's which side of the case you'll place each panel. Now, I did test both configurations in both intake and exhaust before making any tweaks here. And since there are a lot of configurations presented here, I'm gonna switch over from the time series graphs to just capture the equilibrium temps towards the end of each test. Based on the data here, I think as long as you are air cooling your GPU, there's a lot of benefit from having the mesh panel on the GPU side. Intake with the glass on the motherboard side is outright better than the exhaust with glass on the GPU side. And for intake with the glass on that side, the GPU temps are far too high for my liking. So based on a discussion with the case designer, the intended configuration is actually to have the mesh on the motherboard side and the glass on the other. The primary reason being PSU ventilation, but even though air will be pulled into the case for the card to intake, it's still suboptimal for the GPU. Given that, I would continue to recommend an SFX power supply because you really do have a decent amount of air intake, even when you have the fan facing the solid panel. If you offset, you can mount the PSU on the second set of holes, and in that configuration, I didn't detect any turbulence from the fan. If you have an ATX unit, you really don't have a choice there, so you either get the two mesh version or compromise and just mount the mesh side on the motherboard side. So with that being said, I did stick to the same panel configuration and I will proceed for the remainder of testing this way. Now, speaking of the power supply, the first change I made was to flip the power supply. In version one, I was limited by the length of the ATX cable and I think the same issue would apply for the popular Corsair SFX units. That meant I had to inset mount the unit with the fan facing out originally. Now doing so meant that the power supply wasn't helping to vent out case air as much as it was just taking care of itself. It could intake a little air from inside the case, but a lot of that was coming through the outside. And also the AIO tubing had to be run along the top since the tubing could not be routed behind the PSU when it was mounted on the second set of holes. For this rebuild, I did throw a set of uh, cable extensions on here. One of the reasons to run a 240 originally was to have cable management space in this section here. So extensions are a really good idea here unless you want a full on set of PSU specific braided cables or order a set of custom cables, both which will cost more than extensions. But uh, this is the simple way. Because of that, I can flip the PSU and mount it along the outside of the case. Optionally, I did cover the PSU with a sheet of paper, and you can do this with some vinyl or construction paper if the labeling on the PSU is too distracting to you. Now, flipping it does give you more breathing room for the power supply fan, and critically though, it does allow the fan to push out some air from the case as well, so it does improve case airflow. I did also run the extension on the CPU EPS cable here, and although you could do the same for the GPU, I didn't see the point of doing that for the GPU cable, especially since the GPU cable does curl in very nicely along the divider, and most of the cable is hidden anyway, except for the 12 pin NVIDIA connector. With this change, I then rotated the AIO radiator 180 degrees, mounting it either way is really fine functionally. The key is if your rad is higher than your pump block. But this way, it does allow the tubing to be hidden a little bit better, and I think that would be my preferred way to do it. So with that change, I cleaned up the cabling a little bit and then reattached the bulk of the cables along the top of the tray here, and that really opens up the space in front of the rad as well. Aesthetically, I think this way is a bit cleaner, and airflow is definitely better, more straightforward. Though the critical issue with the original configuration was really that choked off graphics card. 
with the flow through exhaust since the card sits right up against the motherboard divider. Now this isn't an issue specific to the Meshlicious. It's a problem common to pretty much any sandwich style case, but this was the first and foremost issue I wanted to tackle here. The 3070 FE is a two slot card. So what I did was remove the riser cable and I swapped in some 632 rad screws and I just offset the riser cable from the original position with a couple of foam blocks. It's worth mentioning that because the riser cable runs along the side of the card this way, it's not bearing the weight of the card. So it's not critical that it's tight on it, right? Because the card's weight really sits on these support bars at the bottom. So securing it tight isn't critical. And that does put the card about 20 millimeters away from where it was before. This accomplishes two things. One, the previously choked off flow through side of the cooler is now opened up which will benefit these types of flow through cards a lot more, but it also pushes the cards intake fans closer to the side panel, which means a cooler source of intake and this really will benefit a lot of cards. Now, strictly speaking, this is only a viable configuration for two slot cards because even a two and a half uh, slot card might exceed the boundaries of the case. Of course, it's like a 2.2 slot card maybe, but uh, you don't really have too much more space here. So do these changes do anything meaningful? Well, intake didn't see a meaningful change. It's more of a rebalancing of thermals, but wow. Take a look at the temps for the exhaust configuration. That's very, very competitive now. And GPU thermals are actually better than a vertically mounted card with the NR200P, although the CPU thermals are still a little bit behind here. I was originally optimistic that intake could be a good option with the changes here, but unless you really need to prioritize your CPU cooling, honestly, I think that the positive pressure option sucks and not in a good way. Flipping the PSU and allowing the room in the center of the case uh, to expand by spacing out this card yielded a humongous boost for both major components and even CPU only thermals improved as well. There's just a better channel for intake through the rear of the case now uh, because of the opened up section in the middle. I did try a few more things like using weather sealing along the mesh panel by to, to isolate the card and using some tape to, to isolate the blower and the card to prevent that re-intake, but honestly, those didn't yield much of a benefit. And they are something you can try with your particular setup though. Uh, just because it didn't work for my set of components doesn't mean it won't work for you. And lastly, some of you might be interested in spacing the case off the work surface. I did that test and just elevated the case off the desk by about 25 millimeters. And to be frank, it didn't do anything meaningful. The GPU temps actually went up about a degree or so, but temps for the CPU only testing dropped by about a degree. So if that's something that you prioritize, then sure. But uh, otherwise, I don't think it's a worthy mod to do. One thing to note is that in the exhaust or negative pressure configuration that I would recommend now, there is the potential for dust intake since air is being drawn through this unfiltered backside and you're gonna have to blow it out often. Another operational downside is the case is going to be blowing air at or near you unless you have this side facing you. But if you find that annoying, you can also change how you display the case just by rotating it a little bit and not having the front of the case face you. Other than those considerations, I'm really satisfied with the changes here. The GPU temps are really outstanding now. And with a little work, this case does become excellent for thermal performance and I'm very pleased with it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Links are down below for some of the build components and subscribe thumbs up if you liked it see you again soon